Victorian structure which had to be rebuilt after a blaze in the 70s. A landmark in flames, South End Pier going up in smoke for the second time in 20 years. Fire took hold of the roof of a bowling alley and ripped through in a matter of minutes. Oh, absolute mayhem and destruction. I mean, the smoke and then the flames. The flames at one, one point must have been all of about 30 feet high on one side of the pier. Sea winds whipped up the flames. 150 firefighters did what they could to contain the damage, running into millions of pounds. We've got substantial damage by fire, very extensive, as you can see from uh, the state of the building. Uh, the building looks to me to be a total write-off. The bowling alley is nothing more than a heap of twisted scrap metal. What caused the fire here still a mystery. Once again, South End will have to rebuild its most famous feature. The last great fire destroyed the end of the pier. To see it happen again has been heartbreaking for some. It's just tragic for South End because we've hung on through a depression and um, rebuilt so much. And the main attraction, really, the heart of South End, is now burnt out yet again. The timing of this blaze at the start of the season couldn't have been worse. Today it was a tourist attraction South End would gladly have lived without. Well, Hal, what is the latest there now? Well, the fires are out, the smoke has all but disappeared, but there's still quite a lot of work for the firefighters to do. And if our camera moves in, we can show you in close-up exactly what's going on. The firefighters are sifting through the mangled wreckage of the bowling alley. They're doing that to establish if it's completely safe. And when they are happy that it's completely safe, they'll allow engineers to move in and carry out a full structural survey to see what can be done with this pier. And also to allow scene of crime officers in to try and establish exactly what caused this fire, which is still a mystery to all of us. Well, now, the pier has obviously been badly damaged. Uh, is there any chance of saving it? Will it be the end of the pier show? I somehow doubt it. There's enormous public sentiment here to keep it open, to have it restored. After the last great fire in 76, there was enormous lobbying to have it restored. One assumes that'll happen a lot quicker this time. After all, after all South End without its pier is a bit like Blackpool without its tower. Let's hope it can be saved. Thank you, Hal. The Republic of Australia came a step nearer. This is Meridian Tonight with Lloyd Bracey and Samantha Williams. Fire devastates the world's longest pier. We've had 45 members of crew in there constantly battling against the flames. Hundreds line the seafront to watch as the building burns. Well, it's devastating, really, you know, to see it go down like that. And Sussex animal exports are to end. Good evening. The world's longest pier has been devastated by fire. More than 100 firemen fought the blaze in South End. Smoke could be seen for miles across the area and hundreds lined the seafront as the pier blazed. Well, we can cross now to South End and join our reporter, Sandy Fleming. Well, this morning the air here was acrid with smoke, but that's cleared away now and so have most of the fire engines that were called here from across Essex. But it'll be some time before the area behind me at the bottom of Pier Hill will be back to normal. At the height of the blaze, Marine Parade was sealed off as firefighters tackled the flames. Richard Brock now takes up the story. The fire started at one end of the bowling alley on the mile-long South End Pier at about 8.30 this morning. Within minutes, it had spread through the whole building. As the flames devoured the wooden structure, a pall of black smoke rose hundreds of feet into the air. Two people from the bowling alley were taken to hospital after breathing in smoke. Four others had to be rescued by boat after being cut off by the fire. More than 100 fire officers from all over Essex battled with the flames. The first firefighting jets were, were uh, put inside the building, rapidly withdrawn because of the spread of fire. We then put crews underneath the structure to prevent the fire from spreading further along to the shore end of the pier, and that operation has been highly successful. We've had 45 members of crew in there constantly battling against the flames. The debris has been falling down from the actual fire itself, and they've done sterling work. But two hours after the fire started, it spread to the pier train station. The fire service called in reinforcements. Just trying to control as much fire as we could. It's flashing over from right and left. 
It's very intense, very hot. There's a lot of heat coming off it and a lot of flame and it broke through the roof, so it's quite intense. The initial danger at first, when we first arrived here at the top side of the pier, was falling debris. There was a lot of falling debris and uh, girders twisting. The fire burned out of control for more than two hours, the hoses seemingly having little effect. Nature hampered the firefighting efforts. At 10.30, the tide turned, and it made it increasingly difficult to reach the seawater. As the pier burned, townsfolk and visitors lined the seafront to watch. They got it so nice and it was just looking right, you know, for the holiday season and, uh, you know, it seems to have, you know, made it... Well, it's, like it's devastating, really, you know, to see it go down like that. Tradition, you yeah. come down here to especially go on that train up that pier, don't you? Look out at sea, that's, a, that's been a big tradition for years, isn't it? By lunchtime, the fire was brought under control. By mid-afternoon, it was out. The bowling alley was destroyed, but the pier itself was still standing. Yes, the building, as you can see, is uh, beyond repair. Um, however, we are hopeful that the, uh, uh, the good services of the firefighters that were underneath the pier have saved uh, structural damage to the actual piles that go into the ground. Officers will now try to find out what caused the blaze. It will be left to others to decide what will happen to the pier. Richard Brock in Southend for Meridian Tonight. Well, joining me now in South End is the council's chief engineer, Derek Reader. Now, you've been here most of the day. What did you think when you first saw the state of the pier? Uh, initially, it was a question of shock and great disappointment because we have arranged so many special attractions for this season and uh, it was obvious that there was going to be some interruption to those. Now, how much have you been able to salvage, do you know, at the moment? The pier structure appears to be satisfactory, although we have to check it when we can do a full structural survey. It is the bowling alley above which is completely destroyed, and uh, that has to be cleared before we can go in and uh, properly assess the damage beneath. Now, you have got the train that goes to the end of the pier running underneath that. What's the damage to that area? Uh, the trains themselves have not been damaged. The railway track has been damaged. Uh, but the repairs appear to be quite simple. Uh, again, we have to assess the extent of them, but uh, nothing difficult to deal with. So what's going to be your first job as soon as you can get in there? Uh, the first job when the debris has been cleared will be a full structural survey. Uh, we will have to assess the condition of the remaining structure, sort out how much we can reuse, and then we will immediately start the repairs. <coughs> Now, have you got a time scale that you're working to? Time scale is uh, determined entirely by how quickly the uh, tenants of the bowling alley can remove their structure. Uh, but as soon as they have done that, we will start work. So when do you think you could reopen the whole pier? Do you have any idea of that at the uh, moment? We can't say at this stage, but we are hoping that by the time the uh, school holidays start, we will be able to have the pier back and running normally. Now, what people are going to be wondering as well is, how much is it going to cost to put this right again? Because it was a £1 million reopening, wasn't it, a very short time ago? Yes, we've spent uh, many millions of pounds uh, in recent years. Uh, the exact cost of repairs now are not yet known, but I'm pleased to say that both the, the uh, bowling alley and the pier are fully insured. Well, that's some good news, at least today. But as any of the hundreds of onlookers or firefighters here today could tell you, it's not the first time that South End Pier has been on fire. In a minute, I'll be talking to South End's mayor about its past and its future. But first of all, David Forsdyke has been looking at the history of the longest pier in the world. Even by a Victorian standard, South End Pier is an engineering marvel. It's been the central point of the town and stood for more than 100 years, but it's not been without its share of disaster. Hit three times by ships and ravaged three times by fires. In 1933, the barge Matilda smashed into the pier, causing extensive damage. In 1976, a blaze destroyed much of the pier. Flames shot hundreds of feet into the air, damage put at millions. Ten years later, a tanker sliced the pier in two, leaving a 40-foot hole. I don't think it's jinxed any more than any other pier. I think almost every pier in the country has had some disasters throughout its history. But it certainly seems strange that almost every decade there's been something gone, gone wrong with the pier, but I don't think it's jinxed, no, I think it's one of those things. It was the world's longest pier and inspired almost universal sentimentality for the old days of British family holidays. Even the town's MP became a friend of the pier as soon as he moved to the resort. 
While other places have allowed their piers to close, we've kept ours going in Southend. It's a fantastic pier and we've got to make sure it's back to normal soon. There had long been ambitious plans to restore the pier to its Victorian splendour. Princess Anne on a million pound boost in 1986 for the pier train. The council had been negotiating with commercial ventures, but now repairs the priority. David Forsyth for Meridian tonight. Well, joining me now is Reg Copley, who is the mayor of South End. Now, a lot of people have been asking today, is there a curse on South End Pier? What do you think? I would hope not. I hope it's not a 10-year cycle either, because it was 19 years ago when the end of the pier caught fire at the Seawood End, and 10 years after that, a boat went through near the pier at the end. So it's 10 years after that almost. So hopefully this is the end of our bad luck, if that's what it is. And do you think the council should still be committed to revitalising the pier area? Oh, yes. People want it. Uh, South Enders like their pier. The world likes South End Pier. That's what we're renowned for. Yes, we shall go ahead and refurbish it. Now, how does this compare with the fire that you had in 1976? Well, the one benefit from this is in 1976 we were underinsured. Uh, we were in the process of reinsuring or updating it, but we didn't, or it didn't take place. This time we're fully insured, and it's only a matter of a short period of time before South End Pier is back uh, operating for the public. Now, you have got things planned at the end of the pier all through the summer. How are you going to get people to the end? Well, I'm told by the uh, chief engineering officer you've just been speaking to that uh, if it, as soon as that building is demolished, the destroyed building, then we can get cracking on replacing the footway, which means that the railway can run again. So he says to me very enthusiastically, if that building was down, we could start tomorrow. So that's the determination of South End, South Enders and South End Council. But what can you do about the shows that you may, may or may not be able to, uh, to hold? Well, I'm sure we'll try and resolve that issue when we get, really get down to it and see the extent of the damage, which I believe, fortunately, is minor. The great thing about it all is that no one was injured, no one was, was killed, and that's marvellous. And I've been along and congratulated the fire service in Essex, and they've come from all over Essex to do the job, which had to be done, and I've seen them and seen their chief, and he's delighted that we have expressed our thanks. And do you think it'll ever be the same again? Well, it'll be a different pier, but it's South End Pier. It's been there in one way or another for 160 years. I'm sure South Enders will look forward to the, their in people inheriting it for another 160 years. Well, that's an optimistic note to end on. We'll hand you back to the studio now. Thank you, Sandy. And we will, of course, be reporting on the rebuilding work as it continues. But to some more of the day's news now. A woman... <laughs> Good evening, I'm Alastair Stewart. And I'm Anna Maria Ash. In London tonight, firefighters battle all day to save South End's historic pier from destruction. How a Scrabble champ wanted a P, found a Q, and was lost for words. And the mum who's seeing double double after winning her version of the lottery. But first tonight, the battle to save South End Pier. More than a hundred firefighters have spent all day trying to beat the blaze that's left the world's longest pleasure pier a smouldering shell. Within the last hour, police have said that an electrical fault probably caused the fire. Annabel Hackney has our report. Fire eats at the world's largest pleasure pier at South End. It broke out in the kitchen at the bowling alley at 8.30 this morning. At first, a few flames creep up through the west side. Caught on video by resident Brinsley Manzi. As he watches and films, a huge fireball sweeps through the roof. There's only a small fire in one of the corners of the roof, but just very amazed at how quickly the fire spread to the whole entirety of the roof. It was just unbelievable. The rate which it spread was just quite incredible. Um, and it really was, a true sense of the word, a flash over fire. We could certainly feel the heat back here. Um, the wind, fortunately, was blowing in the other direction, so there was no debris coming this way. Um, but the, the flames rose to some 30, 40 feet in the air. Two people from the bowling alley were taken to South End General Hospital suffering burns and smoke inhalation. And four fishermen trapped a mile down the end of the pier had to be rescued by lifeboat. Fire tenders were brought in from all over Essex as 130 officers fought the flames. The heat was so intense they could only get near for 15 minutes at a time. Blazing debris falling from the pier threatened small boats moored nearby. 
The bowling alley gutted, the fire moved beneath, threatening the tourist railway and workshops full of explosive paint and materials. We had crews, as I say, down in the, the railway platform tunnel. They were in breathing apparatus using water jets to, to go up into the fire, which was raging above them. At some stages in there, it got rather dangerous for them, and uh, occasionally we pulled them out, uh, fought the fire again, uh, and then went back. But the debris was falling down all around them, and it was, it was uh, a tricky part of the operation, and the crews in there worked extremely hard in very difficult conditions. Residents and day trippers can only watch in grim fascination, but after seven hours it's under control and some can get a break. Damping down goes on all afternoon. The evening brings the sight of a tourist attraction brought to its knees. They got it so nice and it was just looking right, you know, for the holiday season and, uh, you know, it seems to have you know, made it... Well, it's, like it's devastating really, you know, to see it go down like that. The tradition, you come down here to especially go on that train up that pier, don't you? Look out at sea, that's, a, that's been a big tradition for years, isn't it? Shame. Well, we can now go live to Annabel Hackney for the very latest Annabel. Well, I don't know if you can see behind me, Alistair, but that pier is still crawling with firefighters. They're still damping down after all this time. And, in fact, the damping down will go on until tomorrow, we're told. And they won't be able to get in then until, uh, until then to see what damage there is. But their main priority now is getting the railway going. And once they get the railway going, then they can get the people to the end of the pier where the attractions are. Otherwise, people just aren't going to walk the mile and a quarter it takes to get there. Uh, but that's their main priority at the moment. It could take a couple of months. Back to you, Alistair. OK, Annabelle, thank you very much indeed. South End may have other attractions, but it's the pier that sets it apart from other seaside towns. Liz Wickham reports. South End has always epitomised the English seaside holiday and the pier was the essential entertainment once the sand was rubbed off and tea had been taken at Sea View or Dun Roman. Thousands of East Enders have made this pilgrimage for generations. Everything was there for the pre-Benidorm holiday maker of the 50s and 60s. Amusement arcades, fun fairs, jelly deals and a train ride down to the show at the pier's end. But the longest pier in the world also has the longest tale of woe. In the 60s, the town was regularly invaded by hundreds of mods on scooters, who, although not always assaulted by rival rocker gangs, still were an unwelcome intrusion to the average family. And today's wasn't the first fire. In 1976, a massive blaze destroyed wooden buildings and wrought iron pylons, only the concrete was left. Then, as the restoration neared completion, a sugar tanker called the King's Abbey got lost in fog and sliced through it in 1986. Nevertheless, it was all shipshape by the time of its centenary in 1990, only to last five years before the whole painful process will have to begin again. This is Liz Wickham for London Tonight. Uh, the end of the pier? Well, let's hope not. And the government may feel the same way. It's sending the Environment Minister, David Curry, to South End tomorrow morning to assess the damage at first hand. We'll keep you posted. Now, police called it a drugs supermarket. And it still will again. It'll rise out of the ashes again. At a mile and a quarter, the longest pleasure pier in the world has attracted millions of holidaymakers since its heyday in the 20s and 30s. It fell into decline in the 80s, but five years ago, South End Council spent a million pounds restoring it to its former glory. This evening, as engineers inspect the damage, early signs are the pier's steel structure has survived, but the cost of rebuilding is still unclear. Happily, it seems the pier is going to be saved. The pier was insured, the bowling alley was insured, and I've spoken to the council today, and they're absolutely clear and precise that the pier will be back to normal before too long. Local people fear the fire will damage tourism, vital to South End's economy. Well, this is one of the most important attractions uh, in South End on Sea. Over the summer, it will uh, tend to uh, put people off coming. Tonight, there was sadness, but also relief that had the fire happened an hour later, hundreds of holidaymakers could have been trapped on the blazing pier. And joining me live from South End now is the Council's Director of Engineering, Derek Reader. Mr. Reader, first of all, any more idea on what caused this fire? Uh, no, we still have no indication as to the cause, but forensics experts are due to come in and uh, we hope they will be here tomorrow. Is there a suggestion that this might have been deliberately started then? 
Uh, I have not heard any such suggestion, no. Uh, th at the moment, we are assuming it was an accident. Are you going to save the pier, as everybody hopes? Oh, absolutely. South End Council is uh, committed to the pier. I have just come from a meeting with the leader of the council, and he has confirmed the council's total commitment to retaining the pier. And it is important to say that it is only a small section of the pier which has been affected by this fire. It does look a mess. Is it actually as bad as it looks? It certainly is uh, very bad, but within a limited area. The bowling alley has been destroyed completely. There is some damage to the pier railway track underneath, and the walkway has been destroyed. But these are items which we can fairly easily reinstate as soon as the debris has been cleared and we can carry out a full assessment. So when are holiday makers going to be able to go back onto the pier? Uh, we are hoping that by the time the school summer holidays start, we shall be back uh, to business as usual. And we have a very substantial uh, programme of entertainments and attractions for this summer. Good. Sounds very optimistic. Mr Reader, thank you. Next tonight, fear... The fire started on the shore end of the pier in a bowling alley. It quickly caught hold, spreading rapidly through the mostly wooden structure. Fire crews at the scene concentrated on preventing the flames spreading. The few people inside the bowling alley escaped before they were trapped. But a mile and a quarter away at the other end of the pier, a group of four fishermen had to be rescued by a local lifeboat. Today's fire is the latest in a sorry history. There have been several previous fires, like this one in 1976 at the far end of the pier. And boats have a habit of crashing into it. In 1986, a small coaster cut the pier in half. It's a sorry sight for people who remember this pier as one of Britain's foremost tourist attractions. And as one refurbishment has just been completed, local people wonder where the money will come from for another. As firefighters dampen down the blaze this evening, the council say the structure was fully insured and pledged to rebuild it once again. John David, BBC News, South End. Iran has responded. Good evening, I'm Lindsay Charlton. And I'm Anna Maria Ash in London. The wreckage that you see behind me, there's a mood of optimism in South End tonight that its pier can be saved. It would seem to be indestructible, this pier. Three fires in 30 years, ten ships have rammed it, but still it survives. Joyce Hill has spent most of her 72 yeah, summers in so South proud of because it's the longest in the world, is hidden in the wreckage of another major fire which threatened to destroy it. I do hope they rebuild this because the people of South End do want this. It brings in the trippers and they really love this. The London trippers come down and it brings money into the town. But I'm really sorry all this has happened. I can't really believe it. Cocking a defiant finger into the sea, South End Pier refuses to die amid the ruins of the burned out bowling alley. Today, Sir Teddy Taylor, the town's MP, the man they call Mr South End, came with the Environment Minister to thank the fire officers who'd stemmed the blaze before it reached the one and a half mile long pier. It's certainly not the end, so far as we are concerned, as we've said, my daughter did this yesterday, opening again, very soon, South End's fabulous pier, and so it will be. The smoke has settled, the debris cooled, now begins the task of removing the wreckage. The repair people have under a month to restore access to the pier before the family holidays begin. And there's the hint of government support to help the recovery. We must always look for the silver lining in things. What I can't promise is that I'm going to put a cheque in the post. What I can promise is that we will give every possible assistance to helping Southend realise its ambition. 24 hours ago, that ambition seemed lost in the plains, as Southend's fire-ravaged pier could be seen for miles around. A tourist attraction for all the wrong reasons, as 150 firemen braved intense heat and falling girders to bring it under control. Old eyes remember this is the third fire at South End's pier in 30 years. The younger generation is still drawn, though, to the resort they call London by the Sea. Traders insist, although it's a gamble, the pier must be rebuilt if they're to prosper. South End is known for a good day out in the South End pier, and. Uh, and I think that uh, if the lottery stands for anything, then the money that the lottery raises should be used to repair the pier. Tom Ptolemy, the tattooist, has left his mark on thousands of customers, running his business for 25 years opposite the pier. The pier's always been historically uh, a South End landmark, you know. 
And um, I think it would be a shame if we didn't put more money into it and sort it out properly. Like ice cream, Southend has a flavour all of its own. And despite the fire, there's hope in the air. They're even talking of band concerts back on the end of the pier before the month's out. But the bowling alley may take longer to fix. Chris, in your report, the minister said he wasn't going to put a cheque in the post. How exactly can the government help, do you think? Well, it's possible, Lindsay, that funds could be made available from the government's regeneration programme. They could put some money into providing a new complex for the end of the pier. Also tonight, we hear that help will possibly come from the European Parliament. Richard Howitt, who is the Euro MP for Essex South, is to go to Strasbourg next week with his begging bowl in an effort to stump up some of the £2 million needed to repair the pier. Lindsay. Christopher Peacock and the future of the shattered South End Pier. And in just a few weeks, the longest pier in the world will be back in business.